Hi there, I'm meteorologist Robert Spenny here with tonight's Western Pacific weather update. If you want to watch the latest on Typhoon Utour, well, please do click the annotation on the screen. We're still watching that storm system. It is continuing to weaken out here in southern China. Also, the latest video has the latest impacts uh, in result of that storm system after it impacted the Philippines earlier in the week. Up to seven reports of deaths at this time. So it has caused a lot of damage. But today's video update... This one you're watching right now, it's about Invest 98 and 99W, one over Taiwan, one a little bit farther off there towards the east. The thing is, these two storm systems from a meteorological perspective are just going to be a whole ton of fun through the coming week. And what I mean by that, they are just going to be a rather hard to forecast because they are embedded within this outflow of Typhoon Utour and they are developing relatively close to each other and then on top of that we have a very intense and potent high pressure off towards the north that is just going to act like a barricade and keep these areas of low pressure farther down towards the south and just create all sorts of havoc as far as forecasting. Now this is a closer look at the visible slash infrared imagery of Invest 98W. When it is all said and done I think this storm system is going to be the one that wins out over the competition of who is going to be the beast typhoon out here next week between Invest 98 and 99W. I mean by competition, I do believe that these two are going to feed off of each other, kind of like rotating and orbiting stars around each other until one sucks up the other one. Now at this time, though, this area here just towards the east of Taiwan, this is just showing the wind shear um, analysis from the GFS model outlook. Yes, not so much of an analysis, but an outlook. Here in the next six hours, still a lot of vertical wind shear. Main reason, Typhoon Utour is just too close to the storm system. It's really getting sheared off there towards the east. By the day, uh, by the time we go here on Thursday and the Friday, though the wind shear is going to be dramatically incre decreasing over top of this storm system, and what that means is it gradually increasing low level circulation the wind shear is going to be decreasing so you're going to have more exhaust aloft that vertical structure will start to set up around this storm system we see a little bit of a coal out here farther towards the east that is key into it as well because that is going to be invest 99w as it does continue to spin off there so right now we got this low developing another low just towards the east of it and then they start to rotate around each other going through the next uh, several days out here this is actually looking ahead towards friday and, well, really a broad circulation around this one. But let's look into, well, Saturday night into Sunday morning. Just off screen, actually off here towards the east, we have that other low pressure area that really is attempting to develop. And this is what I mean by the two storms rotating around each other. So the more developed one here, straight south of Okinawa. Let's pull up the uh, map here so I can label you here. Naha. So this one, if anything, it's going to keep this relatively weaker. But what happens when you get a Fujiwara effect, which is two storms when they rotate around each other, you never see this in the Atlantic. This is a Western Pacific phenomenon. Um, the big one typically sucks in the little one and gobbles it up like a star venturing too close to a black hole. We see this here. That one continues to weaken out the intensity of this one down here towards the south, which possibly caught Typhoon Trami by this time here by Sunday. Uh, is going to be the bigger of the two. According to this run from the GFS model, you can see it really kind of weakens out. So by this time, actually, Okinawa, by Monday night, you would see lighter winds. But when it's all said and done, this particular model run, let's scroll ahead till Tuesday. Uh, typhoon making landfall over the southern Japanese islands. That is really the key factor here. It's going to continue to work its way off towards the west. So like I said, that high pressure ridge is the other main factor in this and why it is just lingering and meandering out here in the East China Sea is because this high pressure wall is just going to keep that storm system farther down towards the south. Basically, the bodyguard of Japan at this time. Well, it's going to keep it out there until a trough starts to open up, which doesn't seem to be happening. Some models actually pick up on one by one. Wednesday and the Thursday, but that particular model you were just looking at actually has a storm looping off there towards the north, entering this area that I'm just calling the possible threat area, very broad and uncertain thunder, and it, yeah, brings some rainfall to much needed uh, areas that you really need. The rain's out here, there in the southern Japanese islands. Now, this is a different model than Navgem, and to be honest, this is the first time I'm looking at it, so let's go through this together. And taking a look at what this particular model is expecting here through the coming days, uh, it looks like a much weaker system. And really, those two systems start to feed off of each other, and it just kind of rotates around, gradually intensifies near the end of the model, run by Tuesday and the Wednesday. And next week, this 
This is the first time that was actually showing that. Uh, previously, this was showing a very similar output as the GFS model run. The intensity quite strong. What I can tell you is CMC also picking up on a rather strong storm system here going into the weekend and next week. But the model of choice, and really it has just been doing wonders and confirming itself, has been, the, has been the case here throughout the past several days. JMA's model a little bit farther down there towards the so southeast actually from this storm system with 99W winning out the fight between the two storm systems. I don't think that's going to be the case, and honestly, this is a very plausible output through the coming days. Like I said, though, very broad and uncertain once the storm system becomes a little bit more than just an invest area, but more of a tropical depression, I think we're going to have a much uh, clearer idea on our hands of what we're dealing with. For the time being, though, just stay tuned with us here at westernpacificweather.com. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them down in the comment box below. And as always, stay safe out there, everybody. Have a good day.